while we're waiting for the DZ123 decoder to set up inside that TR5, let's do something we've been talking about doing but haven't done. And I don't know, I've never seen anybody do anything like this. But let's try this. Here's the dual motor DD40. Brand new, never been run, nothing other than what we've run it. It's got dual motors. They are not connected to a shaft to each other. So this is one of the la last editions of the DD40. I've got it hooked up to the bench tester right there. And of course, we dropped it. But here we are, hooked up to the bench tester. Now what I want to do is we're going to apply some power to this thing. We're going to find out how much power does a dual motor DD40 draw? How much power does this thing really draw? Some people say it's a lot, some people say it's not much, but we're going to find out. So let's go ahead and dial in about, let's put around about 5 volts. There we go, 5 volts. As you can see here, not even broke in or nothing, a little under 0.3 amps. That's pretty good. Still 0.3 amps, and you haven't put a load on it. So let's see if we can put a load on it somehow. So if I take my finger and I should put a load on it. There we go, that's a good load. Alright, that is going to bring us up to... About 5 volts and we are running a little more than half an amp. Let's see if I can do it this way. Let's do both of them at one time. There. Now we're almost at one amp right there. That's at five volts. Okay, let's say we are running at 12. All right, what are we doing? 0.4? Running at 0.4? All right, let's see if I should probably put on some gloves to do this. Oh yeah, yeah, that'd be a good idea to have some work for that. But let's see what else we got. I want to wrap this thing up, and so let's try them. Let's try first, making it not fall off of its holder here. Take this big guy. All right, I'm gonna put a load on that 12 bolts now. Let's get a little bit. What I need is a uh, something to grab that one. That's just me barely touching it. Let me find use use this one. Still not going over an amp. That's that's like really good. That's really good. Let's see, what else can we try? Let's try this. Uh oh. Now we're still not one and a half. Not even one and a half. Now there's no way that that, unless you're stalling this totally, you would never have that much on it. That's just one motor. The other ones. They run independent. So I want to use, I want to find a way to do these both at one time without burning my fingers. Oh, there it is. 1.7 if they're both stalled at one time. Okay. All right. Okay. So we're running at about 1.7 amps if they start running into heavy load on them. That's still, that's pretty good. I would say that these would be good to go for DCC. You wouldn't do it like this. But only one problem. They're not good to go. And I'm going to show you why. Right now, the way they are set up here, power comes in from both trucks. This is their red wire up top. 
the whole frame is the black wire. So let's say we isolated this. And now you've got the two motors running in series, right? Two decoders. But we're going to put in our power plant, which is going to consist of two of these 266s, which are much more powerful than a jet motor. We wire them one, and then we run from this one like a loop, like parallel, to the second one. And then we set up a, we set up a little set like this. One, one decoder will then send the power to motor one. That motor sends the power to motor two. Right now we don't have that. If we put a decoder on here, motor two is running independent. Actually, it's probably not running at all. It's probably shorting. We're going to do, and these you can make these parallel too. If you're going to isolate them. But we're going to set up our power plant. And one nice thing about ours, it won't be as noisy. That's what we're going to do. And, oh, but if you have one of these, where are these two guys parallel, which you'll see when we make the power plant, you should be good to go in DCC. If you're not, if you're not running a max out under heavy load, a Digitrax DH126 is going to handle a dual motor DD40, no problem. Just like old Hercules over there, he's got dual 266s. I would love to have put in the 283. So let's, let's pull. When did I put those guys? Well, the 283 motor would have been fun, but it did occur to me that because it is so wide, the reason I used it in the brass locomotives is the brass itself basically acted as a heat sink because that thing otherwise has ports on it to exhaust the heat whereas the 266 doesn't need that we'll go we can explain the difference of those when it, and the 280 motor has its own it's got a heat shield around it that acts as a heat sink if we had put the two 283s in here and we made a run for a long period of time without their ports being open they probably would start melting the shell even on even drawing hardly any amps they're, they're going to be exhausting heat, which is going to have nowhere to go. It's going to get hotter and hotter. So we're going to use these guys again. And that's going to take care of that problem. And these guys are super powerful, just like that. We'll see it. We'll get to it. But there it is. There is a DD40 bench test. And we have determined that, even under a load, even under a heavy load, a, a 1 point amp, a 1.5 amp decoder is, is good to go for this. All right, now hopefully our TR5 is ready. We're going to get that DZ123 installed.